All right, let's try and look at this example. Now I want you to find the z-score and let me draw a picture for you. Here's a normal, here's a normal distribution. Again, standard. That's my z-axis. So let's say what's given to me now is instead of the bottom 5%, let's say they're giving me the top. So this time, instead of having you given you the bottom natural area for Excel, I'm giving you how much is on top of the normal distribution, little tail area. So let's say, and I'm put red, and I'll make it a little smaller. So let's say that's uh, two and a half percent, the top two and a half percent, uh, two and a half percent, but I like to see decimal values of so 0 0.025. So that's the probability that's given in the exercise. And uh, I'm asking you to find the z-score that will give you that probability. Now, how would I write that symbolically? Uh, well, that's the top 2.5%. So that just means you're dealing with the bottom 97.5%. So it'll be almost like asking you to find the 97.5th percentile, right? That's right, because that's a, remember, because the natural probability for Excel or for the language of percentiles is always the area to the left. So here, uh, for you to, again, mistakenly write equals the norm dot s dot inverse, and then you put uh, point zero two five. see, that'll give you the wrong answer. Because, you see, that Excel would think that this is the area to the left because that's what always Excel likes to see inside its, its parentheses, always wants to see the left side area. So if you type 0 0.025, Excel will think that you're trying to find, and I'm gonna actually draw it for you here. So you know, what is Excel gonna think you're asking it if you, if you write this? Excel is gonna think you're asking it to find a Z-score that'll give you the bottom two and a half percent. So it's going to give you this value instead of giving you this value. Which actually, if you think about it, it'll give you the same thing. On It'll just be negative. <laughs> so if you actually make that mistake, but you actually understand what's going on, you, you'll be able to figure out, well, it's the same thing because of symmetry. I'll just take the positive value of it. But yeah, I mean, when you're just beginning to learn this stuff, I wouldn't test that deep understanding of the situation here. So just remember that every time you're trying to find some kind of a Z value, and the area is given, in order for you to find that z-value, the area you type in Excel has to be the area to the left of that number, not to the right. So in the example above it, the area to the left was given, it was 0.05, so you just wrote 0.05. But here, the area to the left isn't given, the area to the right is given. So if you're gonna use an Excel command, the norm.sinf command, you're gonna have to say norm.s.inverse, and then you have to say type the area to the left which is 97.5%. Uh, so 97, oops, 97.5% or 0.9750. So here you will type 0.9750 or just 0.975, either way, it doesn't matter. And I'll spit out the answer. And if I round it to, let's say, two decimal places, I get 1.96. And that will be the answer for that. And that's the other possibility that you could be faced with. So let's see if uh, we could do something else here. One more example, actually, where it will be easier for us to just memorize that number. But you could also see what's the, what's the technique to actually get it done. Now, the third version, which is the sort of a strange version. It's it almost not so intuitive in the beginning, but you kind of have to just look at it from a structural, from a procedural point of view and just memorize how to calculate it. Say, you see, we've talked about the area to the bottom, to the top, and how do you type it on Excel. But if I give you the area in the in the middle, in like in a, in a belly of the normal distribution, and ask you to give me the two borders to, to, to each of its sides. Well, what am I talking about? Well, let's draw it. If I draw my standard normal distribution and I draw it and let's say I tell you that what I got is the right in between area here and the area in between is yellow so I'm gonna color it so that's the area I'm asking you to find I mean sorry that's the area I've given you 
And I'm asking you to find those two Z scores that capture that area or this area right here. So if I finish painting this, all right, let's say the area in the middle is 98%. And say, I'm asking you to find these two Z values. And you know, the middle is zero and the Z axis. So obviously I'm looking for a negative Z value here and a positive Z value here. But what's important is that this, this is a symmetric distribution. So as soon as I find one of them, the other one will be the same thing with the opposite sign. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, you know, what you need is remember, if you want to find some kind of a Z score, uh, and the natural probability for Excel will be probability to the left, but the probability to the left of this Z value here doesn't continue, unfortunately, all the way to the left, because that's when that's what Excel looks at. It stops somewhere there. So somehow I need to take that into account. So, and, and the command's pretty simple, but you just have to remember a particular, uh, sort of a procedure for this. So in this example, I'm going to, I've given you the middle 98% of the normal distribution, and I'm asking you to find the two Z values around it. Uh, obviously one of them will be positive. The other one will be negative. Now in order to do this, uh, you can't just use the norm.s inverse of, uh, all the area to the left of the top Z value, this Z value here, because you don't have it. You don't have the area and then I've drawn an arrow here, the white arrow. You don't have the area all the way to the left. It stops somewhere. So you just have to remember that if I ask you to find the two z scores that capture the, the the center strip of the of the normal distribution there is a there is a technique to this madness as to what you do the probability you would use into the norm dot s dot inverse command the probability that you would use here would be always taking the area that i've given you for that middle strip in this case 98 percent you'd have to divide it by two and then on your calculators or on Excel, then you have to, once you divide it by two, then you have to add 0.5 to it. So you could find the entire area to the left of that value and then be able to give that to Excel because that's what Excel craves for Excel in order for Excel to then give you the honor and giving you the Z-score for that, for, that, for that probability. So if I'm asking you to give the two Z-scores for the middle 98% of the normal distribution, then I would take the 98%, I would divide it by two, and that gives me 0.49. And then I, I take that 0.49 and I add 0.5 to it. And I get 0.99. And that's what I, that's what I type in here, 0.99. So one more time, no matter what I give you, 98%, 95%, 99%, 90%, 98, whatever I give you, 60%, uh, as long as I'm asking you to, that that's as long as I'm telling you that that's the center strip area, the way you do it, the way you find a probability is to always take that area, which if you recall several videos ago, that the middle area of the normal distribution is called the confidence level. So basically the formula is you have to take the confidence level. You have to divide it by two and you have to add 0.5 to it. I've said that here again, and this is in general, that's what you do. And that would give you a, uh, that will give you the z-score you're looking for that will capture the, the middle 98 percent of the normal distribution and if you type that properly this the excel should spit out the value 2.3263478.74 and depending on what i ask you for if i ask you for two decimal places then you say 2.33 and that would be the z value on the left and uh, then comma negative 2.33 will be the Z value to the right. Uh, sorry, that'll be the Z value to the right and negative 2.33 will be the Z value to the left. Remember, in this example, you have to give me two answers. One is the Z value to the left and the other one is Z value on the right. So when I'm asking you for the Z values that capture the center strip of a normal distribution, then I'm asking you for two answers. One is a negative value, one is a positive value, but they're both the same because of symmetry, don't forget. So if I ask you this question, there'll be two boxes for you to enter the answer. There'll be the bottom answer, which is the, which will be negative 2.33, and then the top answer will be positive 2.33. So don't forget that. Now I'm gonna ask you another one just like that. Another example, what if I ask you for the Z scores that capture the middle say 99%. Let's draw the distribution. And this time I've given you 
the middle 99% of the normal distribution. And I'm asking you to find these two z values. And I've given you this middle area here. So that's what I've given you. And I'm telling you that that's 99%. Uh, How do you find the z score? That's right. You type equals norm dot s. That's right. Dot inverse. And here the natural probability for Excel will be, oh, that's right. You have to take the confidence level, which is 99%, divided by two and add 0.5 to it. So what did you get for that? That's right, 0.995. So that's what you type in here, 0.995. And if you do that, you'll get 2.57582930 and again, if I say round it to two decimal places, then you'll just give me 2.58 for the top number and negative 2.58 for the bottom number. So again, there are two answers here.